Hello, welcome back to Ali's Digger Diary. Ali's soggy digger diary today. Oh. The old flu hasn't got much better. I don't know whether it's flu or just a cold, but um, I wasn't much use for anything yesterday. Um, today I feel better than I did yesterday anyway, so that's an improvement, but this weather is really making me not want to do much. <laughs> it's teaming it down. Anyway, we're gonna go and have a look at an oil leak. If you watched the previous video, oh, that came out on Sunday, didn't it? So if you watched yesterday's video, then you'll have seen me uh, having a look at it. Um, so it's not gasket as such. There's three O-rings. Um, so it's perhaps an O-ring poking out the side of the block. I'm really hoping so. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna head up to there and uh, get that job squirreled away. Hopefully, if I get it done in decent time, which on paper, although I've never done the job, I'm expecting it to take an hour and a half or so. Um, this afternoon, I should be able to get through to a 140 LCR and service it. That's what I'm hoping to do. Um, and it's got an NH3 sensor fault, which is straightforward enough. Uh, sensor change in the exhaust. So that's my plans for today, but I have messaged the customer uh, of the LCR just to say I'd like it to be today, but it might be tomorrow. We'll see how we get on. And that's all all right. Um, so yeah, biggest challenge today will be this blooming weather. Oof. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll head on up to this dig dig. The weather hasn't improved, but it is what it is. Um, I'm just having a look at this. This is what we're doing today. I think it's leaking between there and there. Looking at this, I don't know whether it's just the pixelatedness of it, but it looked like one gasket, 3-5. It's like joined together. And I think it is that o-ring there I can see squidged out the side. Um, so, it looks like four bolts that hold that sandwich plate on. Um, but this piece here is the engine oil cooler, so we'll have coolant as well. So I'd imagine there's a feed and return hole, and then a third hole will be a coolant back into the tank, uh, back into the block. Um, because we've got a pipe on here that goes in the way, so I'd imagine it cools and then goes back into the block or from the block out and that way. That is, um, that's what we're looking at, so. I've got coolant with me. I've got a, that's not a blue, that is a swilled out drum of fresh water. Um, I've got extra tins of brake cleaner with me to clean up afterwards. While we're doing this, by the way, um, I've got the engine oil drain. I didn't want to run the engine too long, so it's a bit of a slow drain at the moment. Um, probably don't need to, but if I drain it all out, I can put the full amount back in and then it's at the right level and it's fresh stuff that's in it. Right, I'll open this bag. I was correct, it is a, a gasket. So that's good, because I was thinking on the way back, maybe I should have, well, on the way between this job and the dump truck on Friday, I was thinking maybe I should have pulled it out and tried to find an o-ring on the van that might have suited, but I was like, I'm sure that looks like a gasket rather than an o-ring. And um, we've got these o-rings here, which will be for the coolant pack. We've got that, that is an orange one. Um, and we've got this one here as well, which is also a seal ring. 
Uh, so, I know I'll definitely need that one. But I've got these as a precaution, you see. You just don't know what you're going to get into, especially when you're doing the job for the first time. If I ever come across it again, I might think, well, last time I only needed that, so I'm only going to order that. But this time, I've got everything just in case. You never do know. Big folder collecting brass, look. Nothing goes to waste. Anyway, I'm sure you're not interested in that. Where am I up to? I've taken both the um, oil filter pipes off. And I've taken the one coolant pipe off. Um, all three of which have not lost much fluid at all. Um, so, according to my calculations, there's only four volts holding that on now, which are M8s with 10 mil heads. So I've got that. I'll tuck you underneath that panel there and you can see what you can see. Okay, I've got four bolts out and a bonus bolt which holds that coolant pack to the oil, <coughs> oil cooler. I don't really need to separate it um, just now anyway, don't think. Unless there's a bolt behind there. I think it's just held on with paint. I'm going to give it a tap, see if it'll come off. I think I've got all the bolts. Find out in a minute. There we go. Just get myself in a position to show you. So, it doesn't look like it was this gasket leaking. What I could see leaking out was this cap. So during production, this cap was obviously preventing something from leaking while it was being built and uh, they've trapped that in there like that preventing a proper seal marvelous isn't it oh fire right we'll take this down to the van give it a good clean up and uh, get some pictures of that never i say i've never seen that like it I want to tell you a story about one of these caps in a second. I'm to get myself organised. Up you there. So I once had a DX235 LCR-5 uh, and the heating in the cab was terrible. However, that machine had a harvesting head on it and it was a way down in Welsh Wales. Um, when it was noticed so you'd run the machine for the first hour and there'd be a bit of heat in the cab um, and it wasn't too bad but the fella during the winter time he said he had to put an extra pair of socks on because he's getting cold so i went all the way down to welsh wales once upon a time this is a while ago now mind and um had a look at it and uh I took the pipe off the heater matrix and found that the water wasn't circulating through the heater matrix. Right, needs a heater matrix then. So, and this is after the Dash 3 era as well and Dash 3's had uh, one or two issues with heater matrixes and if you know it, you know. Um, so, perfectly reasonable explanation as to why it wasn't working. So. On the LCRs, it's a bit of a big job. You have to lift the seat up, degas the aircon, pull the heater box out just to replace the heater matrix. Went back down there, did that. Um, start the machine up, ran it for an hour or so. Probably should have done it longer, but it was heating in the cab. Job was grand. A week later, the fellow was back on the phone saying it's still not much better. Right, okay. Went back down there and um, repeated the same test and found that the was still no coolant coming through the heater matrix. Well, I knew that the heater matrix that I fit was good because I physically blew through it. So I traced the heater hoses all the way back onto the engine and where the heater pipe goes back into the coolant circulation, there was one of these still on the metal pipe. So that was on the metal pipe and then the heater, heater, heater 
pipe was shoved over the end of that and uh, Jubilee clipped on so that coolant wasn't circulating. So when you start it up, you would get a fresh flow of hot coolant and if you had the fans on in the cab, your fans would basically act as like a fan on an engine. It would cool that coolant down in the heater matrix to the point where it was blowing cold again. And that's what it was. Silly little bung like that. That's all, I've only ever come across it once. And now I've got a second occurrence of a foreign material on the new machine. So there you go, these things happen. It's just, uh, you know, human error, isn't it? These things happen, so. What I'm gonna do now, you can see around here where it's sort of damaged the seal. Obviously, I'm gonna replace that. Um, and on this side, there's five bolts that hold this piece in. And I mistakenly took that one out instead of that one next door, which is the shorter one. I knew about that, but I think I left. Yeah, I took I took that out thinking I was taking that out and then re no, I took that out thinking I was taking that out and then realized and I'd left that one in. So that's the story there. Right. I'm gonna get the old, uh, the old uh, pressure washer in a can all over this, give it a good clean out. I'm not gonna shoot it up there, don't worry. There's not gonna be any residue left over. I've just charged my uh, compressor up, so that's full of air. That's why the van's running. And putting the compressor on. Give this a right good clean up, and then we'll uh, reassemble with a new gasket. I'll also need to clean up the mating face on the engine block as well. Right, the block's clean, but there's still a steady dribble of coolant running down there, so. I'll just let that do. I'll give it a good spruce up um, when, uh, when, 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 and I'll get it all back together. I'm just gonna try and encourage this out of here. Yeah, you can see now the flat spot on that seal. Can you see how it's damaged? It's amazing, really. It's done 800 hours. You'd have thought that would start leaking. I suppose once it's got a bit of age and a bit of heat about it, um, that might be the reason why. We'll just make sure we get this lovely and clean before reassembling it. Also, any of your eagle-eyed people might have noticed there's an o-ring missing there. Um, I've just extracted that from the pipe underneath the uh, underneath the machine, so. I actually think the parts man's gone ahead and ordered replacement o-rings for them as well so if I've got them I might as well replace them then they're fresh too. Give it a right good clean up. Hmm. Right. So looking at that it goes that way around. Is that right? Yes. It's got little tabs on it to keep it in position so it shouldn't fall out when I try and replace it hopefully make sure they're all pushed in nicely there we go don't want anything sitting over this lip It. See how it's got these little half moon bits on here. So there is only one way around you can get it. And that is all correct. Gently encourage that in there. There shouldn't be any oil in here anyway. We'll probably split that and it'd be fine, but make sure it's all nice pushed in. Good. Right, let's have a look for these uh, O-rings on the, what's it called? These fittings here. Okay, new O-rings fitted. New seal fitted. I'd like to try and get the last of that oil out of that little cubby hole there. Just to make sure. Last thing I want to see is oil running when I get this machine back up and running. Tell you, what the biggest job will be is putting all these 
covers and plates back on. Only took five minutes to get them bolts out and the pipes off. Right, it's lovely and clean now. Oh, it goes that way around. Right, I'll put you down. Saying that, don't start it, see if it's leaking yet. So I've got three pipes, a curling pipe, and two engine oil pipes, and then we'll put some engine oil in it. Start it up and run it, and that might help sort of decipher what's oil and what's rainwater, and probably a bit of coolant too. And we'll get it cleaned up as best we can. Right, I'll talk to you here. I've put engine oil in it, I've put coolant, I've topped the coolant up a touch. Um, we'll run it now at a low idle and uh, so far so good. So while that warms up, well that is pretty, I've just looked at that. I'll uh, have a spare up of tools. Um, and I just need a 19 mil to throw all them plates back on. Hopefully that's the way it'll go. Anyway, we'll let it uh, we'll let it run. In fact, I'm going to go and sh shut that cab door. So I think I might have left it open. So it's been running for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. Just checked all the levels. Um, topped up the coolant, engine oil still fine. So I'm going to put it back together um, and then run it again. Right. I'll run it. Yeah, I will. I'll run it while I'm putting it back together and then I'm not sat waiting for it just to double check right at the very end. I'll get it set off again. Just means that it's going to be running right next to me a lug while I'm putting these plates back in. Oh. I'm not wet yet anyway. I'm sure this wetsuit is, but I'm not, which is good. Right, we'll get this thing kindled up. Square up and then uh, have a chat. There we go. Job done. It is lunchtime, half past 12. 
And I got this uh, box this morning, sent through from Ash Tree Care. He's got a YouTube channel as well, go and check it out. Um, and also Instagram as well. We've got some bits and pieces in this box, look. Now, I did say fragile and I wasn't 100% sure. It's good, isn't it? Um, <laughs> whether or not the contents inside had survived, because there's a lot of jingle jangling, but I realise now it was pens bits like that so that's very good i think maybe there isn't i thought there'd be a, a sticker i thought there was going to be a sticker to go on my sticker wall but perhaps not oh, wait a minute now oh some, oh, some sweets hell there'll be a nice little treat on the way back more bottle openers somebody must think i'd drink all the time i don't uh, oh, aha sticker there is a sticker for the sticker wall I'm about to have a cup of coffee as well, so I'm gonna <laughs> might as well use a new cup. There you go, Ash Tree Care. Oh, another cup that doesn't make it underneath. <laughs> I think you have to buy proper Nespresso cups that only give you a mouthful of coffee. Um, oh, I was gonna open this. I want the sticker, the sticker wall. There we go, look. Nice big one to go down there, maybe. Um, uh, there was a comment about putting the stickers on the inside of the van. I should maybe have it on a board that I can move into the next van. But um, the reason why I'm not putting the stickers on the toolbox is because the toolbox is minging. Uh, minging, if you're not from up this way, is filthy. Um, and uh, they probably won't last very long. That is on both toolboxes. I had thought about doing it on here, but a couple of applications of the garden stickers and they don't stick to the wood. I thought about stickering up this box, but it's kind of textured and the stickers wouldn't stick to that. So they're going on the van and uh, it'll just be a new challenge when I get a new van. To... as well in fact that hat is just in time because that one's wet i'll put it on i will right cheers thank you very much from everyone at ash tree care okay i've had my lunch um i'm not feeling too bad now compared to how i did this morning and i didn't want to commit to going and doing that service and sensor if i was feeling pretty crap so i'll uh, it's it won't be the it won't be the end of the world if I don't get it today, because of the way the weather is, uh, and also it's literally just outside of Carlisle. So, um, but yeah, no, the time of day is we should get that squeezed in today. So I'm gonna go and do that, um, and then I'll uh, what I'm gonna do then. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna go and do just distracted because I've spotted a wagon come in and I've remembered to pull in this time. Lovely. So we're here. Um, it's a shame that shed hasn't got a roof on it yet. <laughs> that would have been that would have been a treat that. But um, anyway, likely where I'm at just now, if I pull the digger on this concrete, um, I'll be in the way because the tipping stone so we're just waiting to see where is the best spot for me to muck about so we'll see what happens half past two now so all of this should be nice and achievable um it's just a 500 hour service plus an ad blue filter and an ad blue sensor nh3 sensor so yeah we'll wait and see what we're doing Right, it's a little bit of a tighter area to work in, but um, he's got the back of the machine onto the concrete there, so it shouldn't be too clarty. Right, let's get it serviced. Right then, second woolly hat of the day. The room's still drying. Um, I'm gonna do this NH3 sensor first. Uh, NH3 sensor's over there. I'll take this cover off. 519mm volts, pop this off. And the 
Uh, yeah, we'll do a modification to this. I'll explain more in a minute when I've got this cover off. Sounds like you're gonna have to excuse the noise, not for the wind, but I think they think I'm gonna feed them, but I'm not. Um, right, so this is the NH3 or the ammonia sensor. Um, the job of this is to make sure that once the AdBlue's been injected all the way around here, that by the time it goes right through the system, it's getting used. So it detects any slip, they call it, I think. Um, so if there's any ammonia coming out of the exhaust, that is because there's too much AdBlue getting dosed in. Um, now the reason why this sensor will have failed is this weather. Um, the machine was parked up for a while and it was parked down there I think and the wind will have blown the rain and the snow and everything else into that tailpipe. It'll have sat with rain and water in there and he's got to fire it up and the water goes up onto the sensor and I believe the ceramics inside it's not as tight as I thought it would be. The ceramics inside the sensor will have failed. Um, now, the error code is uh, NH3 sensor failure. Um, and what he was saying before I started here was that, uh, oh, that error code's gone now. And they do, for some reason, it flags up two or three days on the trot and then it forgets about telling you. And so it's an easy assumption just to think, oh, well, it must be all right now, just one of them intermittent problems it might be okay now um, but in actual fact the sensor has failed and it's failed and that's it it doesn't come back to life and I says to him if you start to use the machine it would start to use a lot of AdBlue because it doesn't realize that there's unburnt AdBlue going past the sensor um, and then that begins the process of blocking up the uh, SCR with unburnt, unused AdBlue. Um, so it's really important to change this. Doesn't necessarily have to be that day you have to rush and change it. It's all right, I, I said to him on Friday, you know, you'll be all right to use it over the weekend if you need to. I'll call in on Monday and get it changed out. Um, so that's what it is. Now, unlike the NH3 uh, knock sensor where you've got a nut, it's all one thing and you start twisting the wiring so I'm going to need two hands just to hold it but to prevent this from happening in the future what I'm going to do is cut this tailpipe off there like that and put a, a flapper on it and that all but eradicates NH3 and knock sensor failures on the earlier generation of machines that sensor used to be there and we used to get knock sensors failing all the time um, and when a knock sensor goes it puts it into a limp mode but it's a bit more urgent so anyway two sensors were swapped over and there was a software upgrade to go with that um, and yeah we weren't getting knock sensor faults anymore but we started getting an H3 sensor faults um, in the finish up we decided that a rain flap like that I think it was Balgowney up in Aberdeen that came up with the idea first and we sort of copied um, so yeah that's how we sort these problems out there we go. Oh, it looks stupid. Well, it ain't stupid if it's saving this man however much it is for a sensor, believe me. It ain't stupid if it works. Yeah. There we go. Hopefully. That'll, uh, that'll keep the job right. There's a bit of laptoping I need to do, but I'll do that at the end once I've got the machine serviced. Um, I just need to make sure that that sensor's working as it should. Reset the error codes. Anyway, I'll put that cover back on. And then, um, then what will I do? Get on with the service. There we go then, all put back together. Um, yeah, if you've got a 140 5, whether it's an LCR or a LC, get one of them Spare X exhaust flaps. I think it's like 75 to 100 mil. 
uh, diameter. 13 pound, 15 pound, something like that. This could save you a fortune. Right, while we're on the subject of AdBlue, I'm gonna replace this filter. That's the next job. Well, it's part of the service. It's not really the next job, but it's part of the, you know what I mean. Right, don't have a ratch in the box of bits of jobs to do. Empty box, uh, fuel filter. Should be the blue filter then. No, it's not. What's that? Engine oil filter. Oh, I didn't pack an blue filter. Uh, there's one in here, isn't there? Maybe. Oh no, I see it. No, it's not that one. Goodness me. Is it in here then? Ah, that blue filter here. Looking right at it. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that one. As with any add blue related item, keep it as clean as possible. That just slides into there. And the only other thing, and I've mentioned this before, but I feel like it's a while since I've done an add blue filter on a Perkins, is um, just make sure that the rubber o ring round here doesn't squeeze out the side when you're screwing it down because it's happened to me a couple of times and it's going to start doing it now, look, can you see? We'll back that off. Um, don't know how to prevent that really, other than just watching out for it. Yeah, because otherwise what will happen, it's, it's happened to us a few times, but it's caused a problem once and that was the first time because I didn't pay any attention and uh, put the machine together after servicing it. Started the machine up grand, nothing was a bother. Fella jumped on it, away he went and away I went and 15, 20 minutes later when I got down the road he was on the phone saying I've got an engine management light and it was the AdBlue has lost pressure. It's because all the AdBlue was pouring up out the top of here. So yeah, that cheeky little parsnip round there, make sure it's sealed properly. That one looked alright anyway, you can generally see when you start to screw it down whether or not it's going to misbehave. That there is the reason why I didn't service it at the other side of this shed. Um, and I'm pleased now because he said, oh I don't think there'll be another tipper for another hour and a half, how long do you think you'll be? And I said, well, I could probably do it in an hour and a half. Um, and it definitely hasn't been an hour and a half since I got here, so I'm pleased really that I didn't commit to dropping oil in that yard. Uh, right, what I'll do, uh, I've got a couple of services booked this week, so to save you the repetitiveness of it, I'll put you on a time lapse and uh, we'll get it done. I've just got engine oil to go back in, but I've had you sitting on there. Probably should have put you inside, but then you wouldn't be able to see much for the windows getting wet. <laughs> if you could see how wet my iPhone is, I'll tell you, you'd be shaking your head, you would. Especially if you, if you knew how much I paid for the thing. Oh dear. Right, I'm gonna get a funnel, put some engine oil in it, we'll be fit to start it then. I remembered that my laptops needs, laptops, laptop needs charging. Someone with that, um, it's funny, it's going really well. Too well. I'm feeling a lot better than I did this morning. Um, I just put it down to fresh air. Fresh air fixes a lot, doesn't it? And when I think about it yesterday, I felt really rubbish from the moment I woke up. I did go outside for about an hour just to tidy up in the garden and stuff. So 
And then uh, I went back indoors again and I never really felt much better after that. So if you're feeling under the weather, as much as you don't want to, take yourself for a walk in the fresh air, it might help. Right then, I've just got home, forgot to do the outro. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video, this wet Monday video. Very wet. Um, so yeah, still plenty to do this week. I can't decide what I'm going to go and do tomorrow. I've had a phone call um, to go and see a load and shovel um, in the morning. So that might that might have a bearing on uh, where I go tomorrow. But we'll, uh, I'll make my mind up in the morning once I've got through to the load and shovel. Um, see how much time that takes up and go from there um, so yeah chances are in the next video we'll see something that you won't have seen on the channel before and a few of you have had a good guess a couple of you have hit the nail on the head but I'm not gonna say what because uh, just adds an air of suspense doesn't it eh? get you lot clicking back on my videos get you watching them again <laughs> right thanks for watching see you in the next one